the word of god says it is impossible to please god without faith and faith without works is dead so whenever so we the greatest example that we have before us is paul who once upon a time he used to he killed many christians but when when he had an encounter with god he has got to that stage where he says that it is no longer me but christ who lives in me imitate me as i imitate christ Good morning, everyone it's good to see all of you all of your smiling faces hope you're all excited in the presence of the lord because you are in the presence of the lord and in his presence we are just not justified or delivered but also glorified right our scripture portion for today is from ephesians please turn with me ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 let's pray before we start loving heavenly father we praise thy mighty and glorious name lord we thank you for this time that you have given us holy spirit god thank you for preparing our hearts thank you for speaking to each one of us lord for you alone master can convict us can justify us or glorify us lord father in everything that we do lord no external force master can influence this let you alone be glorified in everything we do in jesus mighty name we pray amen so our scripture portion is from ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 let me read out as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient all of us also lived among them at one time gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest we were by nature deserving of wrath but because of his great love for us god who is rich in mercy made us alive with christ even when we were dead in transgressions it is by grace you have been saved and god raised us up with christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in christ jesus in order that in the come in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of god not by works so that no one can boast for we are god's handiwork created in jesus christ to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do this portion of ephesians paul writes to the church of ephesus where we see in the word of god that in the church of ephesus so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed so in the first verse we see that we were dead in our transgressions and sins what is the word of god say when it's saying that we are dead it's not that it doesn't represent the physical death but it it shows our disconnection with the god right when adam first disobeyed god what happened did he immediately die he did not right he lived about 900 plus years but he was separated from the connection that he had the fellowship that he had with lord at that moment so that is when we see that death came in because of sin disobedience was considered as sin right so in the same way we were also dead when we didn't know jesus as our savior and uh, uh our redeemer here we see that we before when we were 
dead in our transgressions and sins, we lived by the ways of the world. In the next verse, we see that we, we would do whatever we feel like because we were not governed by the spirit that lives in Jesus, but by the spirit of the ruler of the kingdom of air, which is devil. We were ruled by it because we have given the authority that Jesus, that Father God had given to Adam by the act of disobedience, that authority we had given to Satan. So before we were translated from the kingdom of darkness to kingdom of light, we see that we were ruled by our own desires, the desires of the flesh, we were disobedience, we would go by our own thoughts and process. But we were, because of the kind of life, the, because of that disobedient life, we were uh, supposed to be dead, right? We were supposed to be dead in everything. In Our eternal end would have been death, not only physical, but also spiritual, in all ways. But what happened? Because of his immense love and mercy, Jesus, when showed his love during the crucifixion, our story has changed. The story of each one of us has changed. Where now, what does the word of God say? That it is by grace that we have been saved, right? The grace is that, that favor that God has shown towards each one of us and we have responded it. Our response to that grace was by faith. And that's the reason why as we responded to that immense merciful uh, of call of God, we are able to live the life that he has promised for each one of us. The word of God says, it's just not that. If you see, and God raised up, raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. The word of God in Hebrew says that there is nothing that God is going to do now because everything, all the works from the foundations of the world have been finished. So even we were born, the sacrifice was prepared for our sins, right? In the same way, if you see the tense that it is given as, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. It shows our position, our identity after being translated from the kingdom of darkness to kingdom of light. So with this, with this knowing that we are no longer uh, just uh, unknown people, but people of God, as in Peter, you see, where it says, 1 Peter 2.10 2 says that, from nobody we have been called as people of God. So here Paul was uh, addressing the church of Ephesus, telling them how they've been translated from the kingdom of darkness and what is that is expected of them as the body of Christ. You see, uh, uh, if you just go down in the verse, uh, seventh verse, you see that in order that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. The incomparable riches. I mean, if you see in the Amplified Version, it says that boundless riches, unsearchable riches of Christ, unending, fathomless, exhaustless riches of God. What God is saying is, God has done whatever has to be done, right? Now, God expects us as his handiwork, as his masterpiece, as his best creation. The best creation of God is man. How many of you agree? Yes? Because he chose man 
to to manifest that potential that god the, the divine god had that's why we see jesus christ coming in no other form but has come in the form of human and manifesting the divine nature of god so as special people as second peter uh, second chapter of first peter which says that but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation god's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light here you see all of them are past tense it's not saying that you are going to become a chosen generation but you are a chosen generation you are special possession of god which means that he has pro- he has purchased you with a very uh, you were not the salvation is free but salvation is not cheap how many of you agree that yeah the salvation that you and i are enjoying today it was given to us god purchased each one of us with that precious blood so out of darkness into his marvelous light as david also says that thou has made me a wonder so if anybody is saying anything other than that don't you agree with them go to the creator who has created you go to the manufacturer who has usually whenever there is a product you try to uh, you try to see which manufacturer it is right you see whether it's a, is it a german made is it a, a make in china or you you try to know from which uh, place or who is the manufacturer or the creator because the value of the product you assess by that today the word of god is saying that for we are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do what good works which god prepared in advance for us to do such a lovely god isn't it he is making everything easy he's not saying that you need to really work hard to do certain things but he has already prepared predestined each one of you are not by chance that you are here each one of you are not by accident that you were born on earth maybe your parents have not planned you or maybe they wanted a boy child and you you happen to be a girl whatever was the plan of the people around but god had a divine plan and purpose so that's the reason why when we know when we know who we are in christ it helps us to manifest what he has deposited in us right in world we see that uh, we hear people saying ignorance is bliss in some of the uh, some of people say that but in the word of god says that my people are destroyed because lack of knowledge because if you do not know who you are you will not be able to see the plans and purposes and everything that god has placed already if you see it says that god prepared in advanced for us what to do so what are we doing now whenever we are responding to that grace by extending that faith when you're saying yes to what god is saying when you when you're listening to the word of god when you're responding to that you are aligning yourself you're getting closer to the place that god has chosen for you to be there or the things that god wants you to do whenever you're responding when uh, when you synchronize with the spirit that is within you then you will be exactly in god's plan in his timing in his purpose and in god's way all the time which means that you will be functioning in the perfect will of god and that's the best thing that can happen right even if you think that maybe some of the situations if if they if they don't happen in my life maybe my life would have been different but remember that god has god sees you as a wonderful creation god calls you as a peculiar generation which means that though each one of us 
are humans, if we are from the same Homo sapiens species, nobody in this world has the same fingerprint as yours. That's how uniquely that you have been created. And God is saying that in that uniqueness, maintaining that uniqueness within each one of you, God wants to manifest his wisdom through us. That's why in Romans we see that the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because they will be the problem solvers. They are going to be the peacemakers. Where the world is not able to find solutions, we will have the solutions. That's how God wants us to operate. If we uh, see in chapter 3, verse 8, we see that, although I am less than the least of the Lord's people, here Paul is talking to church, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. And the next verse we see, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Jesus Christ our Lord. Just not on to this earth, but by the manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God, God is saying that, he wants to show it to the rulers and authorities even in the heavenly realms because we are his most precious ones and he has paid the best price that he could pay for each one of us. Let's uh, see the amplified version, how, wh how, what it says. Ephesians 2.10, which says that, for we are God's own handiwork recreated in Christ Jesus, that we may do the good works which God predestined, that is, planned beforehand for us, taking parts which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living a good life which he arranged and made ready for us to live. Yes, there is nothing that we cannot do when we align with the spirit that is given to us. Because it is the same spirit, the spirit which has raised Jesus Christ from death, lives in you and me. Isn't that powerful? Most of the time we think that if only I could get some support from anywhere else, right? But the creator is telling you that he is within you and he has predestined the works that each one of us can do and telling us that we are not alone, that he's going to back us up in every plan, every purpose, telling us that we are amb ambassadors of Christ, we are more than conquerors, we are the chosen generation, we are the peculiar ones, wonderfully, fearfully made, so whenever you listen to this word or whenever you meditate on this word, forget about anything else which doesn't align with it. Even if you feel you, you are going through a failure or a situation, know that whatever it takes to overcome that, whatever it takes to see the end from the other side, God has placed in you. So knowing that you are not an accident, knowing that you are a chosen generation, what does it do? It helps us to take those steps of faith to see what God has promised. The Word of God says it is impossible to please God without faith. And faith without works is dead. So whenever, so we, the greatest example that we have before us is Paul, who once upon a time, he, used to, he killed many Christians. 
but when when he had an encounter with god he has got to that stage where he says that it is no longer me but christ who lives in me imitate me as i imitate christ that is the kind of assurance and boldness that paul has got to a stage where he he knows even the end that's why we 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 all of us know about that scripture right i have uh, where he says that i i know uh, i'm i'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand i have finished my race before that in the scriptures we see that it is good for me to to die he says that but it is more benefit for me to be alive so that he can be profitable to the church that was the knowing that was the understanding of paul all through the work i mean all through his walk through christ where he has come to an assurance saying that yes i even know my end yeah there there's a testimony by kenneth hagen a uh, uh, preacher who whose wife had goiter a thyroid condition which which was it was it was growing in, uh, in size and they were postponing the operation and kenneth uh, hagen was praying about uh, her healing so after after a while when he had an encounter with god god says that ask her to go and get the operation done she will not die every time whenever i mean his wife also always had this thing that she would die if in an on in hospital bed but can uh, the encounter in that encounter god said to kenneth hagen uh, that if only my people can ask she was divinely uh, predestined to die on that hospital bed but because kenneth hagen was praying god came and answered that prayer saying that ask her to go and get operated she will not die so that is the kind of uh, fellowship that god wants us only that is possible when we respond to that and when when will we respond to that call when we believe everything that is written about us is true because he is the one who is created right many of times we just feel a little bad about things which people have said maybe in our workplace or in an, in our family if somebody says something you might feel uh, you you feel little low but go to the creator because he will never put us to shame he shows us the true value that he has placed because he has called us to show forth his manifold wisdom he could have he could have done it through any other means but god says that it is through man i mean you you see uh, in the second chapter which says that he wants it to be done through the church church is who you and me right he wants that manifold wisdom to be manifested and manifested in such a way that that will be a solution for many of the things that the world is looking for as i as i told you earlier roman says that for the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god even the world is waiting for our manifestation if if we are happy just with our uh with our salvation alone having this assurance that one day we are just going to go to heaven but god but god's expectation for our generation is such a way that he is just not thinking about the present but also the ages after that which means that from eternity to eternity he wants to show forth what is that he has deposited in each one of us the mercy that he has shown the love that he has shown 
right? He wants us to be that peculiar generation that the world is waiting for because it is only through us that God wants to show forth his potential and he's not asking us to do it all by ourselves, right? He's, he's asking us to just be aligned, aligned, just synchronize with his spirit so that we also will say for we for me to live as Christ and to die is gain. To come to that understanding, knowing that death is just taking us to a next level from eternity. I mean, you're just going to close your eyes the moment you're going to open up. You're going to see all the saints who are waiting for you. And you will know them. You will not, you'll not be surprised to see someone or you'll not be sir, you know, waiting to see someone else in that group. You are made in such a wonderful way that even, even you see the, when God was uh, descending, uh, well, sorry, when God was uh, ascending, you see Peter was able to recognize Moses. How he, did he ever meet Moses? He never met, right? He says that I'm going to prepare an altar for each one of them. So that is how we are going to be translated, just not uh, physically, but also we will, we will be one with the body of Christ. That is church, not only here, but also for eternity. Let's bow down and pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us, Lord Master. Thank you for speaking to each one of us. Thank you for letting us know that we are your handiwork, masterpiece, chosen generation, and the wisdom that uh, you have given us so that we would manifest to the world, Lord Master. Help us to be the ambassadors of Christ. Let you alone be glorified in everything we do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.